Welcome back to the Nullified Take channel on YouTube, where I've got the TNT takes for you on the amazing race 35 episode 8. I know it's dropping really late. And for those that follow the channel that are big fans of the amazing race, I want to apologize. Um, I had COVID a couple of weeks ago, so that uh, prevented me from coming on and doing the podcast that week with Michelle. And then due to personal reasons this weekend, I couldn't make it either. And myself and Michelle couldn't find a time that would work for both of us to jump on and record. So due to that, for the next two episodes, it's going to be a little bit different in the format. I'm just going to do a one-on-one -on -one shorter form podcast with yourself for both episodes to catch up and make sure that we're covering it here on the channel. And I do hope you enjoy it. Um, I haven't done many short form podcasts here on the channel for a long time now because I've got so many great hosts that have come on board that do the shows with me and even a couple of shows now that I'm not even involved in anymore uh, that we normally don't need to do this. But due to the constraints around both our schedules and the fact that I want to catch up and still do it, I am doing it in this format moving forward. So let's get into episode eight. I finally watched it. Uh, it's more than a week late now, and I have avoided all spoilers. So I had no idea coming into this episode what actually happened. And to be honest, I've got to say, it probably was one of my favorite episodes uh, up until this point. Beautiful country, Slovenia. The first time ever that The Amazing Race has gone to Slovenia, which was a shock to me because uh, I'm not uh, a, an Amazing Race historian like this historian Logan who's been on the podcast before. I don't remember a lot of the previous seasons, every single leg that they went to. So I was a little bit surprised that they haven't actually gone there before. But what a beautiful country. I'm sure everybody agreed when they watched that episode last week that um, it was an amazing country for them to go and visit. Uh, driving on the road, green fields on both sides, and these great mountain ranges looked absolutely stunning. It did remind me of New Zealand, where I lived for over 15 years. Very similar. And even in South Africa, you wouldn't believe it. There are some places in the Western Cape where I grew up that very much looks like it could be in Europe. And it almost had that feel. So it kind of was uh, a bit nostalgic for me to see that. Because where I live currently in Melbourne and Australia, we don't have those mountain ranges really unless you drive quite far out of the city. So beautiful, beautiful, stunning location that they went to. Um, also, on this one here, what a start to the episode. They do so much work. A lot of the teams here, they go to the travel agent, get a better time locked in. So instead of 7.30 p.m., you have the likes of Greg and John getting a 4 p.m. flight, which should effectively give them a, two, what's it, five, six, yeah, three and a half hour, uh, basically, head start. And you get Todd and Ashley, Angel and Garrett somehow also on the same flight, if I remember correctly. No, sorry, Todd and Ashley and Rob and Corey also get on the same flight. Uh, they managed to get on that flight and get there very early on by going on standby. And then when they get there, when they go into Austria, they find a quicker way with trains where they have to jump, jump on multiple trains to get into Slovenia faster than anybody else. And this whole plan, all this hard work kind of backfires on them because one of the connecting trains uh, ends up being late. And that is the story of traveling, my friends. Like if you go out there and travel, if you're a traveler yourself, uh, if you've got a five-minute layover like they had, it was a risk to begin with, especially with trains. They can be late all the time. And they had to make a calculated decision to go back. But the Amazing Race producers must have loved this because it gave them a lot of content early on in the episode to focus on so they can fill these longer episodes. I've said a few times that for me and some of the episodes for The Amazing Race, it hasn't necessarily translated into better TV where we just see all of the roadblocks or the detours being longer and the same thing. Like I didn't feel like I was being stimulated by all these different things happening, but there was so much going on in this episode that the hour just flew by when I was watching it because so much action was going there. I was thinking to myself, there's just no way that a scripted TV could have been able to put this together. Like only reality TV can deliver in such a way because as all of these teams get back together, they're obviously shocked because the second half getting there, um, they thought they were that far behind that there was no chance for them to catch up. And they're all on the same train going into Slovenia. Uh, which is amazing for that to happen. Uh, by the way, love, love trains. Um, them being on an overnight train, obviously didn't have beds from 
from what I could see. So they must have been sleeping on those chairs. Probably wouldn't have been, um, or seats, I should say. Probably wouldn't have been the most comfortable, I assume, train ride going in there. And obviously being an overnight train, you don't see a lot of the um, sort of scenery, which they missed out on. But they would obviously more for make more than make up for this when they actually get to Slovenia. Um, so obviously there, they catch up with all the teams. They go into the Congress square and everybody for the first time in a long time are caught up together. They're all in first place. Um, they run out, have to get their cars. And immediately you get a little bit of a snippet here that this is going to be a tough leg for Morgan and Lena because Lena ends up struggling with stick shift. And this is one of those things that it's happened for years and years on the Amazing Race, I think they on purpose get people who are not used to driving stick shift. Um, and I know that, you know, I've gotten comfortable over the years living in Australia and previously in New Zealand when it comes to driving on pneumatics. But in South Africa, stick shift is the most common vehicles that you get. Like you almost don't get automatic vehicles. So I learned how to drive on a stick shift and it's kind of like riding a bike. It's easier to go from driving a stick shift to a manual than what it is or an automatic, I should say, than what it is from an automatic to go back to a stick shift. Like if you started on automatic, I hope that made sense. It made sense in my head. But um, you could see that they were going to struggle and they showed us that. Plus, they also showed us all of this emotional content from back home. They talked about um, their cousin, I believe it was, that grew up with them and the medical episode that she went through, which means that she can't do a lot of the things that she used to do. They got quite emotional about it. And one of the reasons, one of the motivations for them to go out there and do this race was so that they could watch it with their cousin because she could still watch TV. It's one of the few things she can still enjoy, um, which kind of makes you just want to you know, get more behind them. But in The Amazing Race, it kind of felt like this was the kiss of death because why are we suddenly seeing this back? story this content which would make me now worried about anybody else that we haven't seen some backstory about if they were to get it suddenly they're probably next to go but for the majority of this episode there was one team that was struggling and i know that i had some people on the channel when i did my recap and uh, live review of the challenge last week come on to that live that i did with kahuna and they said chris you need to do the amazing race. When when are you going to do the amazing race? We need to hear you talk about the amazing race. And I know why they wanted to do it. They were trying to set me up. You know who you are, Nikki. You know who you are, Chris. <laughs> but I love the fact that um, that you both wanted to hear my reaction on An um, on Annalie and how she did. Almost said Ashley. Always get this confused. But anyways. I know that you wanted me to talk about it because I've been backing Annalie the whole time saying she's just competitive. She's got that fighting spirit. She's a strong woman. She's fighting. Um, and I know I've annoyed you and I did it on purpose a few times here on the channel. Um, but she had a bad episode, like really bad. Um, from the point where they were trying to get to this first, um, I guess, checkpoint and they got lost and very quickly she had a meltdown about being last. They're going to lose. They're not going to get it. And she was a bit of a Debbie Downer, like this whole episode. It's hard to look at that and say, oh, okay, I can defend her mindset because I'm all about positivity. But I also can put myself in the shoes of someone that is going through the kind of stress that I don't think we as viewers really appreciate. Like it's going to make you do things and say things that you normally wouldn't do in your day-to-day -day life. And um her being very negative with her dad, obviously, almost quitting. Um, it was very hard to watch. And I'm sure for her, looking back at this, it would have been hard to watch. Like, it wouldn't be something she's proud of. Um, and I kind of felt bad that this moment that she went through, that it got caught on camera and it was on international, global TV where everybody can see her having one of her low moments. Because if you look yourself in the mirror... And you say you've never had those moments in life. Like it's never happened. I just don't believe you. Like everybody has their ups and their downs, but normally it doesn't get recorded or shown on TV. And she had that moment. Was it good? No, I can admit to that. But like I said, everybody can go through it. And there was this part of me that was thinking when this episode was playing, I'm like, yep, they're going home. Um, but when they finally got to the roadblock, 
and you saw um, Morgan still sitting down there and her talking to, uh, you know, to Annalie and saying, it's not over until it's over. You've, you've got to keep fighting. And I was like, how strange would it be and ironic would it be if they were the ones to kick them out? Because it showed humanity actually in that moment. They were competitors, but she still didn't want Annalie to go down this negative spiral. And there's been a lot of camaraderie from these different amazing race teams. You even see it later on with Jill and Garrett when they get to their housekeeping, um, I guess, detour, and they also try and keep them positive. It's not in their benefit to do that at all. Like, if they were strategic, they would just be, like, not doing that. But I guess it's hard when you see someone else, the humanity in you come out, when you see someone else struggle out there. And she reached out with the olive branch and kept her kind of motivated. But I feel like Annalie was just down the spiral. And there was a lot of time for them to make up at that point because, you know, they were dead last getting into there, um, having gotten completely lost going to the roadblock. But let's talk a little bit about the roadblock. Um, the roadblock, they had to go into these gliders and fly over a lake. And then there was numbers on the lake that they had to spot um, and decipher. And you couldn't have picked, I think, a better challenge to do or a roadblock to do than this one. Um, I've been in many planes in my life. The smaller ones are always the ones that are like the ones that freak me out the most because you feel a lot more of the turbulence when you go on them. It would have been interesting to know from those and, you know, if we get any of the racers listening to this that actually did it, if they could feel the turbulence being in it because they said it was perfect conditions for gliding. Um, but they get into this glider and Jill and Garrett, I believe, were the first two up there with um, Greg and John and um, Rob and Corey kind of on their heels. But Garrett being the one who took it, he got the numbers 1991. And when the question was asked, when was Slovenia first independent? When did they get their independence? The answer was 1991, which I'll be honest, put my hand up. I had no idea when Slovenia gained independence. I would have probably thought it would have been a lot longer than that as well. Um, doing, I guess, 11, like a, somewhere in the 11, uh, what was it, 1199 or something like that he, he put down. That's very early though. I don't know if I would have gone that early. I would have probably gone 1991 be honest but i didn't know the answer prior to seeing it and most people got it garrett didn't get it in his first attempt and the second attempt going up they actually noticed that there was a little arrow that showed where you should start which was nice i didn't spot it the first time but yeah that that allowed for rob and Corey to shoot by with rob getting it the first time you also got um the brothers greg and john they got it the first time and they were out of there a really fun scene, scene there with Todd and Ashley getting to the roadblock and uh, Todd being told, you know, ex-basketball player, you're too tall, you're way too much, you can't do it. So Ashley had to do it. And then him being so jealous about the fact that he couldn't do it. Like if you ever wanted to get on a glider, I feel like the amazing race is the time that you definitely want to do it. Like they probably go through even more safety inspections than ever to make sure that everybody is safe because this is going to be a TV show. and the you don't want something to happen on your watch when you're recording a show like this. So um, it would have been an amazing experience being up there. The water, crystal blue, like just this very vibrant blue color, the mountains and everything. Like this is kind of why you would want to race the amazing race for an experience like this. It was like sensory overload, really, with all the beauty that you could see in this episode within Slovenia. And in any case, so they those are, the, those are the teams that get out of there pretty quickly. And then obviously you've got the teams towards the end that struggle. And um, like I said, Annalie, when they finally got there, she just gets her dad to do it because she feels like they're that far behind. She's too in her own mind to be able to do it. And he steps up. I've been impressed by Steve all the time. His ability, like he does get to the point where he's frustrated with her, but obviously he controls it really well. Um, and he's a dad, like he wants her to thrive and do well. Um, but it's an awkward situation to be in, right? Um, and he steps up every single time. He just does it. Gets it done, um, and they're out of their last. We get to the next part of this, which is where they get to the ski field. Um, I believe it was the Planica Nordic Center. And 
funny thing that I noticed here as they were driving to the Planica Nordic Center is that Robin and Chelsea follows the brothers, Greg and John. And they did that in the previous episode as well. I feel like, you know, that they almost got lost towards the end because they lost Greg and John as Greg and John got away from them. And that put them even further back in the pack. There's You can't always follow people and rely on that. Like, listen, I don't blame you. If you're struggling and it's not your strength, do what you need to do to stay in the race. Makes sense. But your luck's going to run out at some point. And then the problem is you haven't practiced that skill over legs. So if you suddenly have to do it by yourself, you may get found out because you don't have the muscle memory or the experience of having done it on the race. So I'm going to be very interested to see if Robin and Chelsea can continue to follow people or if they're going to find their own way. Todd and Ashley are the first people to arrive to the Plan Planica Nordic Center and have the perfect opportunity to go for the express pass, only the second express pass here of the race. And they're running the wrong direction, completely missing the flags. Now, I know that this was frustrating for them. And probably watching it again, they were so annoyed at how they could have missed it. Um, and people at home is probably looking at it and saying, how can they miss that? I feel like it's hard. One of those things, again, when you're in the race and you're, you're running, like your, your brain's not functioning like it normally probably would. And you're under pressure. And you're like, every minute counts. Like, let's go somewhere. Let's see where we get up here. Uh, but it was a bad mistake for sure because Robin Corey gets there in second place, notices it starts running up the, the stairs, and it was interesting to see Corey in his mind go through all the risks associated with doing this because he thought if his dad couldn't do it, then they were going to be at a disadvantage of having gone up the stairs and he would have been gassed for the rest of the, the, the whole leg. And obviously, Rob, being a bit of a bigger boy himself, this is not his jam. Like, you know, he's built for, um, uh, I think, all of the puzzly stuff or getting into the roadblocks or doing a detour. He's good at most, but I don't think that running is his game or endurance is his game. That's not really what he's signed up for and where he's going to excel. And it gives Todd and Ashley that opportunity to chase them, which they decide to do. And then sort of gives up halfway into it. Uh, Todd wanted to pull out, but Ashley, I felt like was like, let's give it a go. And Again, we talk about Ashley having a bad moment. They were also experiencing for some frustration with each other in the race at that point. Um, and to me, it was amazing to see how Todd and Ashley went down. And then Greg and John got there. They're pretty athletic and they're potentially going to run up. And then they also give up halfway, which clearly shows that it looked probably like it was a lot easier than what it is when you actually get onto the stairs and then you're like, a quarter into it and you're like ah, this is this is taking too long i'm not going to catch them and um it was interesting to see Ro uh, Corey actually explain when they got to that midsection it was a little bit of a flat bit with more stairs and probably if greg and john kept going they would have beaten them but rob and Corey gets it done they get the express pass here in this episode which is going to give them a massive advantage for the rest of the show because now they can strategically choose when to use it. I, I didn't hear, and you might need to comment in the comment section below in regards to how long the express pass will last them. Because I know the first one was like, I think, three legs. So this was probably another three legs as well, I'm assuming. But a massive, massive advantage to have. And um, getting to the top, having this great zip line down, what a beautiful view going down that zip line and i love zip lines so i would have been all for it like again like imagine this you go on a glider and then straight after that you get down the zip line which rob got to experience i think that's pretty cool but for those that continue on um and that decide to pull out of it they go um by the cross-country ski route um and they have to go with skis uphill to get their next clue to the detour. And I've done some skiing and I've done some snowboarding. Uh, I prefer snowboarding when it comes to snowboarding or skiing. But even though skiing for a lot of people is easier, and I do feel like it's easier than snowboarding, uh, for me, I don't know. I've skateboarded when I was young and things like that. I've done a little bit of surfing. I'm definitely not going to say I'm good at surfing, but I'm probably a little bit better at skateboarding. Um, so snowboarding was the most natural thing for me to pick up. And I think I annoyed a lot of my friends the first time I did it because it was quite late in life. Like some of them have snowboarded a lot longer than me and I picked it up pretty quickly. Uh, but even though I've done skiing, I've never gone uphill 
with a ski. So that was kind of weird for me to see um, and probably would have been a lot of work on your back and your you know, sort of abs and things like that as you're trying to pull and get up there. So I wasn't surprised when some teams like Lena, for instance, even though she's skied before, struggled going up there because um, I think like it was an endurance fitness thing as well, trying to get up there. The thing that kind of stands out for me in this is that um, as they go through this, like Rob and Corey made up a ton of time, uh, really caught up with a lot of teams, even on the way to the detour and so forth. Um, but at this point, you still see the likes of Todd and Ashley and Greg and John kind of get up there first, and then they have to decide between two detours. They can choose to do field work, um, or they can choose to do housework. And field work was where they had to put the hay together, hay bale, or not even bales, but just had to like stack hay up on a rack. And housework ended up being they had to build a bee house and decorate some paintings on it on the outside. Um, but before we get into that, I want to talk about the fact that when Steve and Anne Lee gets there and they're obviously last and they see Morgan and Lena heading off and ahead of them and some of the other teams, they go and do the first part first and they know where they want to go for the detour. But then as they come back down, they're like, Hmm, maybe we should just go for the express pass. Everybody has passed us already, but let's take this chance. And they run past both of them, by the way, and not just one of them, uh, equally to blame for this, but both of them run past the, the the flag and specifically misses out that it is already close, like it's been somebody already won the express pass. And when they had to go up that stairs, I thought they were done for. Like, I still thought there was hope up until this point. I'm like, they're a pretty good team when it comes to actually doing detours or roadblocks and things like that they get through them really fast where they've struggled in recent episodes have been trying to navigate their way and uh yeah i thought it was done because even for steve getting up those stairs he was struggling he was out of breath so many times i've watched the season thinking steve's gonna pass out even when he got to the top of this thing he asked for water and he's like is there water around like can i hydrate um the color of red on his face was insane. Uh, I don't know how he stayed in the game. But they get to at least go down the zip line. They don't have to walk down the stairs again, which I'm glad that they had that opportunity because that would have been brutal. And head off to the detour. Now, talking about the detour, field work, and housework, I'm not going to lie. Like, I've done some farming in my life, believe it or not. I'm not in... Um, that industry like i work in corporate now but growing up my granddad was a farmer my uncle was a farmer so i spent a lot of times holidays and things like that on farms you know driving tractors working with hay bales and things like that my brother kind of had the same reaction that a lot of people have um on this episode where he got allergic to hay bales and would itch really badly sneeze all those kind of things and my brother between the two of us He's the one who loves farming the most. So I feel like it's like, imagine being allergic to something that you enjoy. And that's exactly what happened to him as well. And um, it kind of reminded me of my sort of childhood growing up on farms. And also, I don't know if I told this story before, but when I lived in America, I actually uh, worked in both Texas and South Dakota. And a lot of what I did in that time was farm work. I did a lot of farm work while I was doing my overseas experience traveling as a youngster. So um, I've never seen bales stacked in the way that they did in Slovenia, which was interesting. I'm used to the hail bales and putting them in storage and things like that. But it was interesting to see. Um, I'm pretty sure like out of the two, it would have been the easier one to do. And I probably would have preferred it. But obviously, you've got to do what your partner is comfortable with as well. But it felt like it could be a lot easier if you could just get through it and bust it out, which clearly Rob and Corey did a good job because they caught up to a bunch of teams. Greg and John struggled. They were there first and got overtaken by at least two teams. I believe both Rob and Corey and Todd and Ashley overtook them in this section. Todd and Ashley did a phenomenal job catching up as well. Morgan and Lena on purpose going next to Rob and Corey so that they can kind of pace themselves with them. Did a pretty good job at this. It's after this that things went haywire for them because Robin and Chelsea ended up being the last two to get out of there. And it was very interesting to see that they were on their own in the opposite end and nobody actually went to go work close to them. 
Does it mean that they didn't trust Robin and Chelsea to do it right so they couldn't copy off them? Or did it mean that they didn't want to spend time talking to them? Because Robin and Chelsea are so laser focused on the game. They've not necessarily made friends out there. I just found it interesting from a social social dynamic, you know, that no one else was close to them and the rest of the teams were all sort of huddled together. So they were all the ones that did the field work and then housework ended up being, I believe, only two teams, Jill and Garrett, who got there first, and then Steve and Anna Lee. And uh, Jill and Garrett, they did end up getting out of there before Steve and Anna Lee, even though they overlapped, which was surprising in itself because Steve and Anna Lee went up this express pass staircase. Um, and as they leave, Anna Lee, who... I don't know. It was it was it was just very like I said a difficult episode to watch. Annalee, um, even though I get it, like you can go through some tough times. It was difficult saying, "Oh, this is the last time we'll see each other." I don't know if she just said it because she was feeling sorry for herself or she wanted sympathy from them. But obviously, they do the nice thing there and say, "Hey, stay in the game. It's not over until it's over. You should still race." Which obviously, by the end of this episode, makes sense because they didn't get eliminated. But as Jill and Garrett goes away, they again lose or forget their notepad there, which previously was the fanny pack. They're not getting it together. They're still making the same mistake over and over. They decide to turn around and go get it because they plan on being there at the end and needing the notebook. Now, imagine if they come back in the final episode and they have a memory challenge and they've got all these notes and it's the reason they win. Then this would be the move of the season for them to go back. It's probably worth it. Like, I think... Uh, my memory is shot sometimes as well. So I would need the notes that I've written going back. But um, that leaves Stephen and Lee there at the final hurdle to overcome. And they do get out of there pretty effectively. They had a system with Anna Lee doing all the painting and the dad doing all of the assembly. They get out of there um, and they feel like they still got a chance because Jill and Garrett had to come back and then left. So they kind of felt like they could catch up. The next part, they had to go up a skyscraper and they had this climb of 230 feet with a spiraling staircase. So we spoke about this with Michelle previously, where I said, I don't feel like they're running up a lot of stairs this season. Boy, were we wrong. They're back in Europe, and the stairs are back. <laughs> and um, you could just tell Rob was not happy when he had to go up there. And even though Rob and Corey were like so far ahead, they somehow messed up the navigation getting there. Maybe it was because Corey had to stop and use some of that... Um, I don't know, it was like cloths or something that he had that helped him with the allergic reaction he was having because of the hay. But ultimately, Todd and Ashley and the brothers, Greg and John, they are the first ones to actually arrive at the skyscraper. And Todd and Ashley being the more, um, or not Todd and Ashley, uh, Greg and John being the two more athletic guys, apparently, they do get beaten by Todd and Ashley going up the staircase, which may have been strategic where they thought this is not the pit stop. It didn't say race to the pit stop. So let's preserve our energy and just stay with them. Probably was. And as they go down, um, Greg and John make the strategic decision to stay close to Todd and Ashley so they can just run past them when they get to the pit stop, taking first place, winning an amazing trip to Namibia. I've never been to Namibia. It is the neighboring country of South Africa where I was born. Um, I'd love to go to Namibia. I think to go do the sand dunes there, see the wildlife would be amazing. So I think Greg and John is going to have an amazing time. But it was brutal that they won this right in front of Todd, of a Todd and Ashley. Man, if I was Todd and Ashley, I'd be like, these bastards <laughs> for winning it in front of me. Um, brutal to see. Great finish, though, for Todd and Ashley there. May have even been their best. I'm don't have the stats in front of me, but I know they've always been there or thereabouts in the top, but this was a really good finish. Greg and John, I believe getting their third, maybe finish in the first place at this point, which is great for them. They're starting to really become a team that could win this thing. And they also have that belief now that they can win it. Um, Corey and Rob gets in third place, but what a leg for them. They've got the express pass safely tucked away. This is going to be very vital for them in the future. Jill and Garrett getting in fourth place. Not bad for a team that started in last place coming into this leg with Robin and Chelsea at fifth, still doing very solid work. And then the most amazing thing happens here. Like Stephen Anley somehow gets to the staircase going out the skyscraper first before Morgan and Lena. And the dad sticks in there, Steve. He gets it done, gets up there. They go down the elevator, and somehow they managed to beat Morgan and Lena, showing that they must have had the worst time 
at navigating to the skyscraper and they were really struggling because they were, I believe, maybe in like fifth place or fourth, maybe even like fourth place when they left the hay. So a really, really bad finish for them. I know that some people are fans of them. Some people weren't fans of them on the channel. I don't think there's much to dislike about them. Um, I, I really felt, you know, even though they didn't win, their story had a great conclusion in the sense that they have found a way to work together. Yes, they get annoyed with each other. Their sisters, brothers and sisters fight. That's a thing that happens. Let's be, let's be real. Let's just be honest about it. But they kind of found a way to respect each other and see how they can work together in the future. And that was their journey this season. Um, sad to see them go, but every, every single leg, someone's got to go home. And this time it was them. And Stephen Annalee kind of stayed in there. I'm not overly upset about it, even though Annalee has had a rough episode because this gives her an opportunity to redeem herself. If she continues to spiral down this way, it's not going to look good. It's going to continue to be really bad. And a lot of fans out there are going to come for her because she's having her weakest moment on screen. And a lot of people watching this, they can't wait for people to mess up. So they're going to be like, see, I told you. I told you she's a bad person. So um, I hope she gets it together. I hope she re realizes how close she was to going home and just tries to enjoy this with her dad moving forward in the game. Like be, Having a competitive spirit is good, but there's also a point in time where it can become toxic. And... It may just have gotten there, you know? And, and I can say this from a good place. I'm one of the most competitive people you'll ever meet. I love competing at stuff. I love sports. You don't want to play me at board games. And I've been at that place where I'm like, okay, Chris, you got to chill it. You've become too competitive, you know? Put down the dice, Chris. Don't play Monopoly. <laughs> But anyways, that, that's my thoughts and my takes here on this episode of The Amazing Race. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a little bit different compared to what I normally do, but I at least wanted to make sure I did recap it and caught up on the episode. So I will drop another episode in 24 hours. So if you do like the content, please consider subscribing, hitting the notification bell, putting a like, and then commenting below. What did you like about the episode? What do you think about my thoughts? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Um, I really appreciate all the support for everybody that's watching this channel, and I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.